Hello everyone, welcome to this lesson on paragraphing and structure for your creative writing task. If you were in the live part of the lesson, you will have already seen this do it now. We talked about the words disenfranchise, apocalyptic, totalitarian and oppression. And we talked about these definitions, removing someone's rights, complete disaster, uh, totalitarian government has complete control and cruel and unfair treatment is another word for oppression and they all belong to the dystopian genre which we covered way back before Christmas before uh, this latest lockdown so here's what we're doing today this lesson is kind of a dirt lesson actually it's kind of a um, a response to what I've been seeing in some of your work so far uh, for creative writing this applies to both of my year 10 classes because you kind of need this in different ways. So this is really just a reminder. It's a bit of a dirt lesson. It's something that I want to see present in your work, in your writing going forward. There's no need for you to go back to previous work and do anything specific on it. You will simply need um, to keep these in mind moving forwards. You'll also need today, obviously a pen and a bit of paper. You will be able to write on the document that I've put into the files section for today. Um, just download it first. In fact, it would be easier if you could do that. But if not, making notes on pen and paper is absolutely fine. So paragraph and structure. We know already that this is our question five task. You're going to complete a piece of writing. It's going to be about 40 marks. Oh, it's 40 marks worth. And it's going to be about 40 minutes, maybe 45 minutes with planning. You also know that this is what it looks like. We've been through this before. Section B, writing. You get a choice of tasks, either a description or a narrative. It might be that the description is based on the picture that you're given. It might be the narrative. You just have to read carefully. Okay. Like it says here, don't make assumptions. Read the questions carefully. Here's some pictures of the dystopian genre, like we discussed in our uh, starter today. We might come back to some of these images later on this week and start writing our own dystopian fiction. Uh, we'll see how we get on. So, if you remember, last week I gave you this or these parts of the success criteria as a, a skill focus for your piece of writing. I said I wasn't too fussed about your use of language devices or your vocabulary or things like that. What I wanted to see was a clear structure to your writing, accurate use of paragraphs, and then linking your idea, your ideas together with a range of connectives. That's all part of the structure of a text. And I really believe that if you get that right, if your structure is there to begin with, then adding in the, the vocabulary and the language devices afterwards is much, much easier. Some of you did really well on that. Some of you have focused really quite closely on hitting that objective. Others still need to work on it. And there are a couple of different things that I think you need to work on when it comes to that. You can see here that this is the mark scheme for um, for the creative writing. And you can see where I've, I've boxed out in red where we think about um, structure. So from the top, the, the left hand red box, it says very inventive use of structural features. Just beneath that, it says varied and effective use of structural features. Now a structural feature, yes, it's paragraphs. And you might be thinking, well, what can I do with paragraphs? Like what is so varied and inventive or what can be varied and effective about a paragraph? Well, there are a couple of ways that you could use them. And there's one, one way in particular that we'll cover in a second um, that might make it more, more effective, more inventive. It also says on the, the right hand side, on the right hand red box, fluently linked paragraphs have seamlessly integrated discourse markers. And you'll notice that the phrase discourse markers appears all the way down um, to the bottom where it starts to say random paragraph structure or no paragraphs. Now a discourse marker is essentially the first few words of a paragraph or the first sentence of a paragraph, the bit that tells you what's going to happen in the coming paragraph and how it happens. We are going to cover that today as well. So as this is a YouTube video, remember that you can pause this at any time to make notes. I'm going to set you a couple of tasks that I want you to pause the video for as well and you'll need the worksheet for that task. And you can re rewind it, go over it again whenever you need to. It's always going to be here for you to, to use. Okay, paragraphing your work then. Like I said, structuring your work basically includes paragraphing, linking those paragraphs together, and some different narrative forms that we'll cover next lesson. 
paragraphs then. <coughs> a new paragraph, basically you start a new paragraph when it comes to changing time, changing place, changing topic, or changing the person speaking. Okay, you can remember that with the acronym TIP TOP. So the TI stands for time, the first P is place, the TO is topic, and the second P is person. Now you can see here that there's an extract from Holes um, that gives you an example of changing paragraph quite frequently. I think one of the things that some of you get scared about or you're not too sure of is when to change paragraph, especially when there's a person talking. Now, it, it doesn't matter how much that person says. It doesn't matter, even if they say a single word, even if it's just like a yes or a no answer to a question. If someone different starts talking, then they need their own line of speech. And then again, after that, you go on and you and you start a new line again. So this is a, legitimately an extract from a, a book called Holes. And you can see there where the bus guard talks, he gets his own line. Where the focus or the topic uh, shifts back to Stanley, the paragraph starts again. When the bus guard set, starts talking again and it's not Stanley that's in focus, then we get a new line. Okay, you'll notice there where, the, where you've got the three lines at the bottom, the bus guard continues to talk. So he doesn't need to, you don't need to start a new line there because it's still the same person talking. If Stanley was to reply to that man, then you would start a new line. Here's where your varied and effective can come in. So when it comes to paragraphs, there's not a lot you can do other than get them right. But if you think about short, dramatic statements that you can use within your story or within your description, like the, th the four yellow ones that we've got here, these can work quite well on their own. Okay, That night everything changed might work by itself as a paragraph before moving on to describe the night. I should have helped might work as well or something like the bottom one and that is my greatest regret that could work as the f the final line in a piece of writing and if you use it by itself it has all the more power it's more effective that way now don't overuse these i wouldn't use any more than one um, single line paragraph in a piece of work but it is something to keep in mind when it comes to varied and effective work so here's your first task then in your uh, worksheet for today, you've got an extract from the Thursday Murder Club. It's all about uh, a lady talking about another lady called Elizabeth. But I've taken the paragraphs out of it. Out of it. I want you to think about that, that rule, that the paragraph occurs when the, the time, place, topic or person changes. And I want you to paragraph that piece. So pause the video now, have a read through that extract, and I want you to put the paragraphs where you think they should go. So, this is what the original text look like, looks like, and this is where you've got um, your paragraphs. There are actually five paragraphs here. So we start off with a couple of questions about um, this person wanting to talk about Elizabeth. And that's her asking the questions though, this, this first person narrator. We then change paragraph because the second paragraph is information about Elizabeth, where she lives, um, saw her on a quiz team, um, or Stephen, who's a, her third husband, is on a quiz team with this narrator. Then we change again because we've got lunch. We've shifted topic to lunch and what Elizabeth was, was talking about when she went to lunch with this person. Then you've got dialogue. This person says to Elizabeth, not at all, of course, please. So we change paragraph again because she actually says something to Elizabeth there. We then get a little bit of detail about what happens after the dialogue. And then we change paragraph again because Elizabeth then... Um, in reported speech, this is called, it's not direct speech, so it doesn't go into speech marks, but reported speech, you get a description of an attack. So you can see there where you go from the top of that particular chunk of text, the questions about Elizabeth, through to some information, then we've got lunch, then we've got a little bit of action as Elizabeth takes a manila folder out and there's a little bit of dialogue, and then there's this, this bit that's completely different to the rest about a quite a gruesome description of an attack, really. So you should see there how and why those paragraphs have been put into place. If you didn't get it right, then maybe you need to rewind, go back and look at time, place, topic and person again and see if you can get it the second time. The final thing I wanted to talk to you today about was discourse markers. 
A discourse markers are, like I said earlier, just the first part of a paragraph. They link paragraphs together. Um, they, they give your reader a sense of what's going to happen in the paragraph to come. Okay. You want to be subtle with discourse markers. You don't want to use the same ones all the time. And the key, key to discourse markers is not just simply to use words like suddenly all the time, because we get a lot of that at GCSE level. Don't be one of those kids that starts everything with a suddenly, because not everything happens quite suddenly. In fact, you'll be surprised at how little things happen suddenly. So here's what I want you to do next. I want you to go back to that uh, extract from the Thursday Murder Club, and I want you to underline or highlight any discourse markers you can find in sentences or paragraphs. There are going to be a few, and I'm only going to pick out a few for you on the next slide. And not every sentence or new paragraph has one. Sometimes a sentence starts a new idea. You're looking for where these ideas connect together. Okay? Pause the video and come back to me when you're done. So here's a few then. We've got from the top line the idea that this narrator who's talking about Elizabeth is a little bit of a gossip. She keeps using um, connectives like and and also to string our ideas together. She seems to be really eager to tell us a story. One of the other discourse markers she uses was I was at lunch. Uh, it tells us the, the time, the place and the, um, the topic has changed. She's going to stop talking about Elizabeth now and she's going to tell us a story. And this story occurs during our lunch time. It also gives us the time period, like this is two or three months ago. We then get the, the discourse marker of a so. And what does so do for us? It's kind of like the, the continuation of the story again. It works in the same way as and and also do. So she's done something. I won't, ever, I won't remember anything exactly. I might as well tell you that now. So, and then she goes on again. And she continues to gossip about this Elizabeth woman. I do like the use of then as well. Then she was straight into it. And then she asked me to imagine this girl had been stabbed. We're going to see on the next slide how then is. It can be less effective than this. In this sense, it gives us the idea that this woman is really eager to tell her story, that she's gossiping to us as a reader. But on the next slide, you're going to see how it doesn't really work very well. So take a look at this paragraph then. See, I used the word then again as well. Then I noticed the cameras everywhere and I stopped. Then I put my head down to try and hide. I walked on further, then I decided to go into a shop to try to escape. Then I picked up a baseball cap and bought it. I put it on my head and then I left the shop again. I carried on walking, cameras everywhere. Then I knew that there was nowhere to hide. I had broken the government's rules. Then I started running. Now there is so much you can do with that paragraph. The person who wrote this has obviously struggled to use discourse markers effectively because they're really, really relying on then every single time. It's a time connective. It just connects those, those ideas together but it doesn't really give us any information and it's not very engaging when it's used over and over again like that. So your final task is to rewrite that paragraph. You can, you can chop down the paragraphs as well if you wish. There is one particular line in there that might work well by itself on a single line paragraph. I want you to change those discourse markers. I don't want to see very many thens in your answers. Once you've done that, come back to me here and we'll have one more slide of reflection. So finally, I just want you to pause and reflect. What have I taught you this lesson? What have I taught you that's new? And what have I taught you that you already knew, that you already had been taught, and uh, that you just needed a reminder of? So is there any fresh information there? Or is it all stuff that you're thinking, yeah, I already knew this, I just needed a reminder? Secondly, everything that I've taught you for today, how is it going to help you gain marks? What are you going to do when you're sitting in an exam? What are you going to be thinking about in terms of what your examiner is looking for when it comes to question five of language paper one. Let me know next lesson.